Trying to find like the best disc for you can be really overwhelming sometimes and it's really hard to know like how a disc is going to fly like without actually throwing it. And yes, there are flight numbers, but like sometimes like you find like tour series or signature series discs that have different stamps on them. And every company has like different standards for flight numbers. So I thought we would uh, take a look at a few discs and kind of talk about a few general guidelines to kind of know how a disc might fly for you without actually throwing them. Now I do say generally because honestly you won't know exactly how a disc flies until you actually throw it. Like for example when I first got the cookie I looked at it and I thought it would fly completely different than it actually flies like. But we will talk about what I missed with this because I, I I know what, what I read wrong about it. But yeah these are all just general guidelines to give you like a a good direction on choosing and browsing discs. And this isn't just for beginners, like it, if you're more experienced you might learn a thing or two, or if I miss something you can uh, comment it down below and we can all learn from it. So we can have a few tricks when uh, next time we're browsing some, some discs. Now one of the main things that I kind of look at with discs or notice at first is the underside of the wing. Now looking at two extremes here, we've got the Discraft Athena and then we've got the Discraft Heat. When you look at the underside of the rims, the Athena is like concaved under the wing here. So you can see that pretty easily. And then the heat is the opposite. It's like convexed, I think is the term for it. Now don't ask me the physics of that behind it because I don't know, this is just from experience throwing them. But generally that means they're going to be more stable. So the Athena here is pretty concaved underneath. It's gonna be understable and the heat is pretty convexed, which is going to make it understable. If you wanna look at a couple of closer molds, we've got the Undertaker from Discraft. And this one still convexed here ever so slightly, but it's not nearly as much as the heat. So this one is actually, it'll, it'll turn for you a little bit still, which is the case with a lot of Undertakers. When you throw it with power, it'll turn for you like a touch, but it's still pretty stable. Um, and this one feels a little bit more stable, even though it has a convex rim on the bottom, or even, it, it might be even slightly concave. It's pretty straight on the bottom, but um, that leads us to the next thing, and that is the wing height. So the wing height is the second condition that affects the flight of a disc which by the way, all these uh, sports cars behind me, I'm actually filming at uh, a friend's shop. It is called Albatross Disc Golf. He started out as a uh, sports card shop, which he still is, but this last year he started carrying uh, disc golf stuff and he's actually a friend of mine from college and he was kind enough to uh, let me film in his shop and look through all of his discs to kind of show you like how to shop for discs here. He's not sponsoring the video, but he was kind enough to let me film here and he's a friend. So yeah, if you're in the Kansas City area and want to check it out, it's uh, by Black Hoof Park. It's like down the street, like five, 10 minutes maybe. So yeah, it's a pretty good location. But back to the wings. So like with the Athena and the Undertaker here, they're actually like pretty close in terms of how high the wing is. The Athena is a little bit taller but the Athena is also like a lot more stable. So the differences between these two is a combination of the Athena wing is higher, but also the under wing over here is more concaved when the Undertaker is more straight or convexed. Those two combinations make the Undertaker slightly less overstable. But then when you bring the heat into the discussion, the heat is like, it's so far under the Undertaker that I literally like pushing them together made the Undertaker go over it. So those two things, the heat's considerably more convex and it's significantly lower of a wing. So the combination of both of those makes this very understable. And you don't even need a tabletop to really see that. You can kind of see when you look at the profile, you can kind of see when you look at the profile, like the, the disc almost seems like it's like almost sad type thing, which makes it pretty understable. And then the Athena looks a little less sad. It's almost like it still curves down, but it's like less so. And the wing kind of sits a little bit higher, almost a little bit higher than the middle. And then when you get something like a overstable firebird or something, the wings are even higher. So it looks, it almost looks mean type thing. And if you get a tilt, then it's just like absolutely ridiculous. But um, you don't need to get a tilt. You don't need to. And the wing can make like a pretty big difference. So like, for example, I've got the, the DGA Rift here. And then we also got the 
DGA Quake. If you look at the undersides of the rim, these almost look identical in terms of how concave they are. But again, if you look at the shoulders of them, the rift is significantly lower than the Quake. So when you throw them, the pipeline, or not the pipeline, the rift is actually going to, you can kind of see it, like it doesn't look completely sad, but it looks a little sad. So this one, I, I haven't thrown a rift. I don't even know what the numbers are, but I bet you this one like just ties or flips a little bit and pretty, pretty dead straight. Might turn a little bit, but it might, it'll probably fade back because it doesn't look too understable. When this one, it's like that wings, it's pretty high. It's almost like with the rift, the wing comes out into the middle when the quake, the wing comes out like towards the top. So the quake is probably pretty overstable. I th I've heard it's pretty overstable. I don't know. Um, I'll have to compare it to my fugitive because another thing you can do is compare it to others. And this is, this feels very similar to like a drone, but the drone is just so deep and so thick of a rim that it's just not comfortable. It's almost like they shrunk it down and it might not be as overstable as the drone, but it feels significantly better in the hand. So that'll be interesting. And the wing is actually what I kind of missed with the cookie, the clash disc cookie. I did a video on the anniversary box back I don't know, it was sometime in the last fall. I mean, it was before Christmas, so their, their mystery box, their anniversary box. I looked at the other side of the rim, and the rim is very, like, it's very rounded. It is concaved a little bit, but it's very rounded and curved and almost like a, a little bit conca convexed on parts. So I looked at the rim and I was just like, it looks pretty stable but it looks like it's gonna turn. Cause I had no idea what the flight numbers were or how it was supposed to fly. It just said cookie on the top. So I threw it and it was actually a lot more stable. So it like didn't turn at all and faded. I thought it was because of the plastic, but apparently the cookie is made to be like that T-bird type disc, but it's very rounded on the edges, which was very interesting to me. That is where the wing came in. Yes, it's a rounded rim and the rim or in the wing is actually not a stable wing, but the wing sits so high relative to the rest of the disc that it makes it more stable, which what they did with their fairways is similar to what DGA did with their mid ranges here. I've got these soda on the underside of the rims. They look very similar, almost identical under the wing here. But then when you put them on a table, whoop, the soda here sits significantly lower than the cookie. And these measurements don't take, they don't take very much, like very little, like those little bits make a huge difference. And this one you can actually see on the numbers, seven, five, negative two, two. So this one is made to flip, which I kind of like how they did that, both DGA and Clash is like, they want the same feel in the hand, but they just moved the wing down a little bit so that you can get the different stabilities with the uh, similar feel. So good job, good job Clash and good job DGA. Those are, those are, it's very nice for someone who wants a, the similar feel and confidence in the hand, so. But there is another way you can kind of nitpick when you go to like, for example, the Athena. This is basically like a T-Bird clone and a lot of companies have that T-Bird clone. So how do you kind of nitpick between those? There is one small thing that uh, I have found with that. So let's go, let's go find some T-Bird clones. First the T-Bird, T-Bird threes. That'll, that'll do, yep. I got the Evader, yeah. And then the last one. Yeah, that's a good one. The Votum. Also, I know it may be weird that like I'm talking about like how you shop for discs in person when I don't actually have like a physical store. I only have, I only have on an online store and you can't really do this online. Well, if you're playing in the Glassbone Open this weekend in Emporia, which if you haven't played the Glassbone Open before, like it is probably the most fun amateur event that I've ever played in. It's an absolute blast, but they have a block party and I will actually be there vending at the block party. So if you want to come by, say hi, uh, look through discs, you can use some of these uh, 
tips that I'm use, giving in this video to shop for discs. And you can come say hi, hang out. Um, you don't have to buy discs, just come say hi. Uh, I'd like to meet a lot of you guys if you guys are there. Just look for like a like standard tan tent. I'll have a sign on one of the tables with Apollo Disc Golf, but the, the tent is not Apollo Disc Golf. Uh, those, are, those are expensive. And uh, Academy Sports had a tan one on sale, so. Look for a tan tent. Now when comparing like these four molds, the Athena, the T-Bird 3, the Evader, and the Votum, they all have like the same general flight numbers. They all have the same like concaved bottom wing here. They all have like the same general wing height. So these should all fly exactly the same, right? Generally, yes. But also nitpickingly, no. And there is one thing about this that changes between them that makes the difference. And that is this, so like the T-Bird has it. See this little like bead on the wing here? I don't know how well you can see that on camera. There's a little lip on the edge of the T-Bird wing. You can see it right there with the light. And that little lip can make a big difference. The Athena is probably like the hardest to tell. Like I have a hard time telling in person, so I doubt you can try and tell in, on camera but I can't tell if there is the smallest of wing beads or if that's just like flashing or what. Well, that's the closest one. Then the Evader here, the Evader like does not have that. It comes out to like a flat edge. It's almost like bezeled, a little bezel off the edge there. I don't know how well you can see that. Then the Votum is even more so. The Votum is like rounded off. On the, on the edge of the wing here, which those things have their benefits. So the, what basically what that little bead of the wing does, I have a video about it, it's pretty bad, but I'll link it in the description if you wanna hear me talk just sitting in the woods talking about it. That sounded weird. Anyways, but basically like what that is, like it essentially like creates drag. And so it essentially makes the disc slow down more and have a little bit more finish at the end. It's the same thing that it does with a bead on a putter or a mid-range disc. That's like the bead for drivers. I don't know if you would call it a bead or a lip. Uh, Paul Macbeth in one of Hannah Macbeth's videos called it a uh, wing bead or a bead on the edge of the wing. And so if uh, Paul Macbeth calls it a bead, I will call it a bead. He has spoken. But that essentially makes the T-Bird more consistently finished, but it also doesn't hold the lines as well because it doesn't hold its speed. So like if you're holding an Anheuser, this will come out of it a little bit faster when the Votum, this thing, like it's still pretty stable like a T-Bird, but when you throw it on an Anheuser, it will hold longer. So you might like that. It has the advantages of having that rounded off edge here. Another mold to look at with this are like Firebird clones. Let, let me go get some Firebirds. So like some uh, Firebird clones. We've got the original Firebird has, just like the T-Bird, it has that little lip here on the edge of the wing here, which makes it basically slow down and, and give a little bit more fade at the end, have a little bit more integrity at the end of its flight. Now the Felon, which the, the Felon is actually like kind of notorious for being a more mellow Firebird. To have generally the same stability of a Firebird, but not have as much integrity at the end. And this one, like the Evader, it's like beveled off at the edge here. There's no, there's no bead. That could be why this one is not as, doesn't have as much integrity at the end of the flight. And they actually added that little like lip or bead at the end of it with the uh, Saki Bomb Felons, which you can find at ApolloDiscGolf.com. Or like the uh, Eric Oakley Spice. This one also does not have that bead. It's a, this is like almost rounded, kind of like the Votum, but this one has, I think this one's even more concaved on the bottom than the Firebird, so that might make up for it on, in terms of how overstable it is. Um, I need to test them against each other though, and we'll, we'll get a video about that soon, because uh, I like the feel of them. They're, they feel really nice. Then the Raptor, I think they changed the mold for the Raptor maybe, because I got an early Raptor, and it did not have that bead at the edge of it. It was almost like the Felon, where it's like beveled off. Like I did use it a lot, but I don't think that bead would have come off with how much I used it but these this one here has like a small little lip here 
on the edge. And then if you get the Captain's Raptor, it's, it's similar in shape, but it has an even bigger bead at the edge of the rim. At the edge of the rim, there's probably other things that make it more overstable than this Raptor, but that's that's one of them that the changes that they made. But yeah, those are some of the things that I look for when browsing discs to kind of get a general idea of how they fly and how they're going to fly and if I'm going to like them or not. And I actually uh, look at a lot of them in terms of before I even make a video, I'll look at them and kind of have an idea of what kind of molds I should compare it to and um, how it might fly. So, so yeah, let me know if I missed anything in the comments. Um, I know the one thing I forgot to mention was the, the like dome on them, like more dome, the generally more glide. So if you want something super meat hooky and beefy with no glide, you want less, less dome and the high wing, that, that combination pure beef. And then I know you can get that like uh, uh, the Das Savic uh, talked about the under the wing thing on the destroyers and you get super nerdy with that. He goes very in detail on that one. So um, I feel like every time I talk about this, someone comments it down below. Yes, I have seen it. So <laughs> yes, I have. But yeah. And then if you're going to the glass blown open this weekend, hit me up. I'm going to be at the tan tent at the block party and come say hi, come shop for discs. If you, if you're in the market for some and uh, yeah, I'd love to see, to meet some of you guys. So see you there.